Before we get seen, find somebody you don't know. Can you hear me okay? Oh, yeah. 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 This week is our beliefs, which is our Y4C2Ts. And Erica, as her second co-hosting day, is going to do the Y4C2Ts dance. Oh, I don't dance. <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell you that I finally know what it stands for. <laughs> so we have win, win, or no deal, integrity, do the right thing, customers always come first, commitment in all things, communication, seek first to understand, creativity, ideas before results, teamwork, Together makes everyone achieve more. Trust starts with honesty, equity, opportunities for everyone, and success results through people. We're in the people business, right? So now when we hear Y4C2Ts for all of us new colorisms in the room, we know what it stands for. So as you walk down the main hallway, you see the big signs with us on there. This guides everything we do. This is what we believe in doing. Um, and the great question is, if we had to take one of these out, which one could we take out? None of them because they're all that important. So here's another cool thing. We went to the ALC clinic last week, and this is the MBBVP all put together. But they've added something to it that wasn't showing up before, and we've got it highlighted here. This is what they've added new to sort of define why we do the things we do. Go ahead. Erica. Our associates should be treated like stakeholders. Profit matters. Stakeholder companies always measure profit or loss, so open the books and tell the truth who you are in business with really does matter. And then this one really hit me. I highlighted it last week. No transaction is worth your reputation. You're building something that matters to people and there is nothing in business that matters more than the reputation you're building. There is no right way to do a wrong thing. Right. I hear amens all around the auditorium. All right. So we, yes, you can't hear what? Okay, we'll talk louder. We will project. So we have a lot of vendors and affiliates in our program. Look at this screen. Next year, we're going to go to two screens probably. Who do we have in the room? You get, you get about 20 and a half seconds to stand up, say what you are and who you do. <laughs> 20 and a half seconds. Jeff Johnson with You Mortgage. I just want to bring your attention to three events. Liliana and I are going to do a Grinch photo shoot, not Santa, Grinch, so come and get grandkids' kids. Flyers over here. I'm um, doing a broker open with Cynthia Shu Pinheiro tomorrow, Mexican coffees and sweetbreads. And starting tomorrow at our offices, uh, we're starting a new Realtor Mortgage 101 training session. So these will be once a month. Lunch is on us. Lively roundtable discussion, question and answer, et cetera, and so forth. Thank you. Awesome. Adam? Okay. Yep. So Adam McGrath with Comparion Insurance Agency, and we always appreciate helping your home buyers figure out what insurance options are best for them. All right. What do you have for us? Morning, everybody. Bryant Young. And why is everybody grown when I stand up? That's no fun. Uh, Bryant Young insures the Ozarks, your friendly local insurance agent. Uh, took my kid to a pumpkin patch this weekend. There was a horse drawn uh, hay ride. Really excited about that. Um, why is it a problem when a horse falls down? They can't get it up. <laughs> You're welcome. Wow. Next. That's why we all ground. Give it, Mike. Insurance. Uh, 
Right, all the property casualty needs there. Uh, just one quick thing as far as when you have clients that have been pre approved and with the lenders as well, when you have a home, especially as it starts getting older, insurance costs can go up and you have a potential of a customer being pre approved for a certain amount. They go to look at homes in that price range. Newer homes, yes, they can afford. Older homes, so the insurance price starts going up and now they're not pre approved for that anymore. Uh, I just try to push and recommend if we have someone that we're quoting and they look at different properties, it's five, 10 minutes for me to take a look at seeing where that property price would be on the insurance and seeing, making sure that they can still stay qualified. So you're not spending hours and weeks to find out at the end, everything can't get done because of the insurance. So five, 10 minutes, we'll get that property updated and make sure that they stay qualified. Kevin with Allstate, thank you. Do that as part of your estimated buyer's worksheet. And if you don't have one, contact me. I've got one that will do all the different percentages of loans all at once. So let me know. Who else? Jess. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, it's hiding. <laughs> Hey, um, Jess Bowman, Bowman Insurance Group. Uh, we are help, here to help with any and all insurance needs. Try to get quotes back to you guys really, really quickly um, and just answer questions and kind of be on your team and help you guys get the deal done. Hi, Christina Ferrante. I'm your hashtag lending lady for life with Flat Branch Home Loans of 417. I love you guys so much. This is the highlight of my week. Thanks for letting me be here. Carl, who's hiding behind Kevin? Yeah, I'm hiding. I'm short. I was going to say, uh, Carl McDougall, Docs on Home Inspection for all your home inspection needs. Um, we, I literally do it all. But uh, one of the big things I do is help try to talk to clients off the ledge, explain things to them so they can understand them, and then take those phone calls. So me and Corey had a client this week that was crazy. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we were able to talk her off the ledge and uh, get it done. So. Close. <laughs> Thank you very hey, much. Hey, hey. Good morning, everybody. Garrett Dollins with Meridian Title. Um, you've heard me talk for several weeks about a big surprise that we're holding. Uh, you only have to wait till Friday. Yeah. So, oh, 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 we're oh, there. Okay. So, so be on the lookout. Everybody's so. in the room for that huge announcement. Yeah. I mean, well, it's coming. Okay. It's only a little bit longer. So. You'll see. Uh, good morning, guys. Cole Keeling, USA Mortgage. Unfortunately, you guys might have seen rates have continued to go up since the Fed cut rates, uh, as well as this week. They've gone up quite a bit. I just want to remind you guys that we do offer the MHDC program lower rates right now, 5% for non-cash assistance, 5.75% if they do want to get that down payment assistance. So there's still options to get a lower rate. All right. Go ahead. All right, Derek Cheney, home loan expert with Mid Missouri Bank. Conveniently located right across the parking lot. Like Cole said, rates have jumped up uh, quite a bit, but uh, Q4 has still been super busy for us. And a lot of that's because of you guys in this room. So thank you so much for that. And George, and just being a back row Baptist. <laughs> George with a chose home warranty. And I must say, I'm super excited to see the amazing Lala Baker here today. Yeah. Uh, that's Shane's pretty okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always right. mentioned second. <laughs> and did we miss anybody? There were a lot of affiliates and vendors here. Who did I miss? Oh my gosh, yeah. Well, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name's Cindy and I'm with Great American Title. Great's in the name for a reason. We call you and we call you back. And I am just so happy to see so many beautiful faces in this room. It's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you. Awesome. Anybody else? I'm oh, and hi, Shane. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hi. I need to say hi to Lala. Hi, Cindy. Hi. Okay, so who was the last vending winner? I saw somebody with the trophy. George? Okay, so. So who are you giving your vending to? So this Vendy is going to go to someone who is, is, is sets a great example for how affiliates should be in the real estate space, always giving back, always championing the, the, the space, uh, and someone that if you're an affiliate and want to know how to do things the right way, uh, Garrett Collins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The big secret. <laughs> this was the secret. The three time club. Okay. <laughs> hired him at some point. So. Okay, so Lala Baker was the culture winner last week. Do you want to say who it is this week? You want us to read what you sent? Please read. Okay. <laughs> I'm shy. Well, no, make her do it. <laughs> we'll let her off. Okay, uh, so Lala won last week, so she said, since we announced our group's move to KW, best decision ever, uh, both Amy and Carrie of 417 Property Pro have been incredibly welcoming and supportive. They inspire me to extend the same kindness to others, and we are so lucky to work alongside both of these talented women. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, yeah, can I Since they're here, they don't get text. <laughs> All right, onward. Do we have any of our onward people here? There you are. Onward Agent Services. We currently offer transaction coordinating for both under contract and new listings. Um, we also offer marketing services. So we do newsletters or social media packages or a little mix of both. <laughs> um, and then we also do sign running and lockbox running. So if you have any questions, come see me in the leadership office. And they do have some specials running right now. So here those are for the quarter or at least for the season. I don't know when they'll switch those again, but uh, this is a great way to leverage off some of the things you need to get done. That way you can spend more time with clients. Jim, broker moment. Such a big <laughs> crowd. Those are updated. Wow. Can you guys give it up for your broker? He's a <laughs> this is the biggest crowd we've had since we had food. Uh, any questions? <laughs> They wanted to know what you're going as for Halloween. Oh, uh, you know, with the beard, it kind of messes things up. You know? I thought of the bearded lady. Oh. Uh, so I read this this morning, and I think it hits true for all of you. If you ain't having success and you keep doing the same thing over and over, then do what I told you in the first place. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wise words from the broker. Yeah. How many of you have an LLC, one or more? Okay. There is a law that's come out. We'll see if this will click to the right spot. You have to register it by the end of the year, unless you already, unless you just started this year. And this is a link. We'll try and get these out to everybody, but this tells the, some, some of the stuff you got to do. Um, if you don't, they'll be up to $591 a day fine because of whatever reason the government decided on this. This page is the simple, let me get to it. This is the simple 57 page explanation of how to do it. That's so simple. I have not gone through it yet. I've got two of these I got to get done, but we want to make you all aware of it and we'll get more info out. But it's, it sounds like it's a simple process, but it's a tedious thing. So the act is called the Corporate Transparency Act. And so if you're disclosing the LLCs and the ownership information within it. So if you set up your LLC yourself or if you have an attorney, reach out to your attorney. My attorney, it helped and they were able to file everything for me. Every LLC you have not just one, every single thing that they'll have to go through. Creating that FinCEN number, though, will allow that transparency across all of them, so it reduces that. So I would just contact your attorney. Hey, I heard about the Corporate Transparency Act. If you created your LLC last, like before last year, um, you have this whole year. If you created it this year, unfortunately, hopefully someone told you because you only had 90 days to file it once you created it. So there is a couple of things that this does create urgency. You need to talk to your attorney or even your payroll person just to start on that right track, but it's called the Corporate Transparency Act. This goes for every LLC, even if it's real estate or not. So if you had another LLC, maybe you had a, a coaching one or an a investment business, anything, all LLCs have to be filed. So, so Rachel, is there an easy link to get to? Because I've not found anything to get from the simple spot. Carrie says what? yes. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? To I what? did it portion? all last week. It, 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 I mean, it, it takes a little bit of time, but there's even a link that's like a YouTube to show you how to do it really fast. I posted okay. it. And then you just put it at like three times because that's how I do things. Okay. I posted it yesterday on my Facebook with the link. And then there's also a five minute like from that website. Okay. Um, I almost got like duped and went to a, another website to pay $149 mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. do it. So it's free. And I did all four releases yesterday. So feel free to stop by. I can help you. Yeah. Too. Okay. That's Great. the cool thing it's here. Easy. You're not alone. Somebody will help you with stuff. We want to make sure you know the info. So you're ahead of time because um, it's important to be in an LLC and get paid that way uh, for your tax reasons, but we want to make sure you get it all set up right. So Maybe we even do like a, a group thing if we need to, but we'll, we'll get that. Don't wait for uh, December 29th and 30th. Go ahead and get on that. And while you're at it, don't call people you're not supposed to. Don't get sued. Okay. Uh, numbers for this week. Every number was down except for closings in the East Counties. Um, seven homes went under contract in one day or less. That's the lowest I've seen since we started tracking this. It used to be 30 to 40. And this week it was seven. Mm -hmm. Compared to last week, uh, like I said, all the numbers went down basically. Compared to last year, it's similar, but it's still 
every day is different right now, especially during election year. You know, everybody's like, oh, what's, what's going to happen? Well, as James Shaw said, elections haven't affected the housing market for the last 250 years. They're probably not going to do much this time either. So if it's time to buy the house, buy the house. But here's the one interesting number that came up. Yeah. Um, so number, for the first time since yeah. 2019, um, we were at 2,059 listings. So now we're at 2,160. So we have seen the shift. Is that what we're learning yes, about? That's oh. amazing. So we now have more homes available than the same week in 2019. And people buying slower. So you've got to have conversations with your people. Let's go to the tech world. Nicole, what you got for us? Hello. So yesterday was a very fun day if you logged into KW Command. Um, this email was sent out on Saturday notifying all of you to update your passwords. Um, I do want to let you know that there has also been some spam junk that has been going around. I'm going to be putting that in the internal page so that you can be aware of it. It's basically asking for credit card information and all of these things. So just ignore it. Report it as spam, please. I'm going to post it so you know exactly what to look for. But just so you know, if you are still having issues with updating your password, please come see me or reach out to me. Um, I've got a couple of fixes I did post yesterday. And then I also want you to be aware that this is apparently going to happen every 90 days that you need to update your password. So, I know, I know. How, however, I do believe that they are working on an easier way for you guys to update it. So then that way we don't run into the issues we had yesterday. So, just let, let me know if you have questions or need anything. And that's all I got. Just remember, any conversations in here go through the little green microphones and out to the whole world, and they can't hear everything else that's going on. So help us with that. But yeah, so uh, Nicole had a lot of phone calls yesterday. So it will get there. They'll figure it out. They'll make it where it's easier. Because those of you that like use a transaction company or have multiples on your team, they're going to figure an easy way for it. They always do. All right, Shanna, Ignite. Oh, yes, Ignite is back. We are halfway through the Ignite session so far. So we have two weeks left. It'll finish on Friday, November 8th. And we'll have a little uh, little ceremony for those who graduated Ignite. It has been really amazing. The guest speakers who have come and, and shared their time with you has been phenomenal. It is not too late to just join. Just come on down at 12 o'clock, and except tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, Thursday? Thursday. Thursday is 1230, and you'll hear why later. But okay. uh, come down at 12. Come just be a part of it. It is phenomenal. It will make your business better. Here's why you don't want to come at that time on. Thursday. This is why it's 1230 on Thursday. Yeah. So the annual Halloween chili cook-off and costume contest is Thursday. Remember, all of you are fighting for second place because leadership team is going to take first. It's just obvious. Um, to be very transparent with you all, I want to come as a ghost. Uh, uh, good. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, great. We'll more info on, on Halloween and stuff. Or is that Nicole? Or landed. Or landed. I think it's landed. Yeah, so we're gonna we'll have the chili cook off. We have Nicole's posting link to sign up for that. So essentially, the way it works is you will you can purchase tickets. It all goes to our local charity, Springfield Cares, for us to be able to give back. And then the winner of the chili cook off this year, we are giving away a cutting board this year. So we're actually giving away a physical, tangible gift. It's the first time we've done that in a few years. So yeah, show up at eleven thirty. Um, costume is not required. We do. As many costumes as we have is great, but if you are if that's not your style, then still come for the chili and the camaraderie. So we love our event. They can come as a real estate agent. They can come as a real estate agent, so yeah. that will qualify. But tell us what the tickets go for. Because <laughs> you just said tickets. Yeah, so the tickets, the ticket prices are still two to be determined, but they're gonna be um, you're gonna get donate what you want towards our Springfield Cares. And we we'll do something like 10 tickets for five dollars, but it is going to our local charity. So and then you put the tickets into which chili that you choose to vote for. And then we'll count the tickets at the end for the chili cook-off winner. And if they don't have cash, they can put it on their account, correct? Agent billing, however you want to however you want to donate, we'll make it work with y'all. And we're gonna make it big for KW Cares. I can throw some beans in the chili too, for the beans chili. And what? Beans. <laughs> Gotta have beans. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Not a, not a meat paste man, are you Joe? Nicole, do we need more chili registrants? 
Not really. We have about 10 people signed up to bring chili, but the more the merrier. And if you're like, I don't like to bring chili, then go ahead and bring some toppings. So bring cheese or Fritos or I don't know, whatever you put on jalapenos, whatever you put on your chili. Um, Cause we do have that as well. Or if you want to bring bowls or spoons, um, I will be sending out a reminder to or tomorrow morning for everybody who did sign up. And then if there is actually a need, then I will also post that too. Very cool. And word on the street is that somebody in this room makes a really good pickle <laughs> soup. So you might want to pickle soup. <laughs> so you might want to swing by to see what other chilies might be represented. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Um, coming up in November, we have a luxury home tour. We used to do caravans. We go look at houses all the time. We're going to look at three luxury homes, um, and you're going to learn how to speak luxury. So if you've never been in that market, this will help you know what things you're looking for what things to do differently, um, how to how to show a luxury house. So that is on November 12th. There'll be more info coming on that. And that's about the end of October. We're about done with the month. And chili supper comes up and then we're there. So what happens in November? Greater Heartland Summit. This is mega camp on a regional basis. Here's the schedule. It is mainly November 18th all day and half of 19th. It's gonna be a great event. If you wanna stay down there at Chateau, they do have rooms for $159 a night. But this is close enough we can come back and forth. But this is a great event, and we're going to get more detail on this next week and get very intentional on getting more info out for it. Um, but this will help you if you've never been to one of the big events to see what they're about. Anything else from anybody on that? Anything? Room blocks do end tomorrow. Yes. About inviting a friend. Oh, so if you have a, a friend that's an agent somewhere else, and you think they would benefit from this, and if they're around eight deals a year to two and a half million in sales a year, that's who will benefit the most from this. If you have somebody like that that wants to go with you, we'll get their ticket and your ticket. So think of people you've done deals with lately. We would love to have you and them come to this. Tell us about the meet and greet. Yes, so my two fearless gals are in the room, Lala and Paulina, and we are putting together for those in the room and those watching online and all of our Keller Williams family, if you are new to Keller Williams this year or you rejoined us, this year, this is a meet and greet just for you, but we would invite everybody to swing by so you can meet all of us. Um, so we're calling it the Fresh Face Party. It'll be December 2nd in this room, and we have some amazing sponsors, some food and drinks, and we are super excited to just get to know everyone. So, And you don't have to be just the Fresh Face to come. Right. Everybody can come to, to meet everybody. More stuff for your calendar on down the road. February 17th through 21 is a uh, family reunion in, in Las Vegas. More info on that. If you take this QR code, they'll give you the updates as it comes. And if you really like to plan your calendar ahead of time, Mega Agent Camp, August 11th through 14th this year in San Antonio. So make sure you're marking your calendar. Those are things that are going to be great to help you grow your business. If you've never been to either of these, go to Regional Heartland Summit just so you get a taste of what it's like on a smaller level before you get to the big one. Okay, you've heard us talk about 201 Club. If you have 201 people in your database, you should make about 120,000 a year off just those people and their referrals. This made me mad last night. So this is why I'm going through this. This is my neighborhood. That's my house. This is my neighborhood right here. This is my walking trail that I do each night. I'm about two and a half miles a night. Today's I'm being good. Walked by this one last night, new sign went on the on it, $515,000. There's a sign right here as I drive in. There's a sign here. Guess how many of them are mine? None. None of them. That is the neighborhood right now. Green is active. Yellow is pending. Blue is closed. That is 13 homes. Wow. Guess how many people are in my neighborhood? By the way, that's why I'm doing this. About 220. You don't think the 201 Club is real? This is not a digital 201 Club. This is my local 201 Club, except for this guy right here. That's Jim's house. He's not, <laughs> and he's not doing Halloween candy this year because it's too expensive. So don't go by. <laughs> no, we were talking about that the other day. Have you seen the prices of Halloween candy? Yes. I'd almost stop eating chocolate. No, not really. But this is, okay, here's where this gets real. That's 13 properties. 4.6 million in sales. $140,730. Within walking distance of my house. This is the last 30 days. This isn't a year. Guess what? I didn't have any of them. 
That's one hundred forty thousand dollars. Actually, make it one hundred ten. Jim sold one of them. Brad Minimus has one of them under contract, so I won't uh, take from them. This Evans Group did too. Okay, that's one hundred ten thousand dollars. I have a grandchild coming in in March. Wouldn't that have helped? <laughs> Guess what? I didn't do. I didn't do the work. And so every day when I walk and I go by those stupid houses with somebody else's sign, <laughs> it's a sign to me that I, why was I sitting home watching the Cowboys suck? I could have been out going around my neighborhood talking to people. And that's the thing we keep seeing over and over with ALC, with everybody. We got to, yes, our training is great, but you got to get out of this classroom. You got to take it. You got to go do the work. So good. 201 Club, $140,000 within walking distance. What's your neighborhood? What is your tool one club? You've got to start doing these things because it's there. We're just not doing the right stuff. Yes, ma'am. I just want y'all to know that one of those houses my husband and I have physically been working on for the last year. Don't forget to meet the wife. Because Bree Hunter got that listing from me. So <laughs> I, I drive by her sign yeah. on my way in. Yeah, every time. yeah, I put that fence up. We redid that shed. We've been redoing the inside of the house through our handyman business. Mm -hmm. And guess what? I never met the wife. Mm -hmm. So, so what's your neighborhood? What is your your real two hundred one club and your digital two hundred one club? It is there to make a difference in your life and your family's life. We've got to do it. Okay, that was chastising me. I got to get off that. All right, let's okay. jump to the shift for the week. Yeah, we are so excited because um, this is been, has, has everybody enjoyed these shift tactics? I mean, I just, every day I'm like, it's come to life for me. But today we have uh, two incredible speakers with us today. We have Denise um, first up and she's going to teach about tactic five. I thought this was really interesting. Two things leading to his point, but most people never run far enough on their first win to find they've even got a second. Are you pushing yourself? And the other thing I thought was really interesting of what he just said was that all of you have leads, right? You don't have a lead generation problem. You have a lead conversion problem. And so I think as we learn today, think about what Mike said. Let's hear from the woman this morning who is so inspirational, who has done it herself. And let's really lock into what we can learn. Denise? Denise Knight, come on up. Welcome, welcome. I did so good that so many of you are here. It feels like old times. I love it. You, you really give your teacher energy when you show up, when you're not just on Zoom. And what I love about what Keller Williams does and what Keller Williams teaches is it all crosses over. So for like our vendors who are here, everything that I'm going to share with you today, you can use in your business. And I'm going to stick really closely to my notes because we have a really short amount of time, at least for me, in teaching. So let me get this. Is it clicking? Okay. okay, so what I'm going to talk to you about today is Shift Tactics um, 5, and it's Capture, Connect, and Convert, okay? Those are the three things I want you to remember, Capture, Connect, and Convert. We all know that the most important part of real estate is what? Relationships. <laughs> Lead gen. lead gen, lead generation, which relationships are far bad. <laughs> In a shift, it becomes lead conversion. The effort you give to converting leads must match the effort that you gave to generating them. Most of us will actually miss this. We look at our numbers of appointments and we will assume that our lead gen models are broken that they're not working when the bigger truth is really that our lead conversion needs help. In 2015, when I started first started coaching, I would see this often when I would go over numbers with clients. And some of you, um, some of them, it's not about getting leads, it's learning how to get them to the table, right? You might all have lots of leads, but it's learning how to actually convert them and get them to the table. I want you to start changing the way you look at lead generation and start saying that I am leading for appointments instead of that I'm just lead generating. Because if you just lead generate, but you never get them to the table, they're not really a lead, okay? A lead is someone that you get to the table that you make an appointment with. Um, we tend to speak to the activity we engage in instead of the outcome we seek. Action versus purpose. 
at Keller Williams, we want to be purposeful in everything we do. So what are you doing to be better at catching fish? Do you like to fish or do you like to catch fish? It requires preparation, practice, purposeful action. You have to do the work. So Gary says scarcity will define a shift. Mm. Good leads are great. Great leads are golden. But leads that become timely appointments will be what matter. Conversion always matters, but even more so in a shift. The bottom line in a shifting market is it will hinge entirely on your ability to convert leads. If you generate but can't convert, you can still go out of business. Leads will become golden. Gary tells us a story in Shift Tactic 5 about top real estate agents who were giving their leads to salespeople, other people maybe on their team or in the office, and they told them to lead generate these leads and convert into appointments. And what they found is their appointments went way down. So these top agents took all the leads back and all of a sudden, they started setting appointments. And what they realized was they didn't have a lead generation problem. It wasn't the leads that were bad. It was the people didn't know how to convert them. We are salespeople. You can call yourself whatever you want to, but we are salespeople. And you're going to have to get sharper in your sales technique, techniques as we shift in this market. Outside of generating leads, Personally handling and converting leads to appointments is the most dollar productive thing that you can do. Capture, connect, and close, and then repeat many times over. Converting begins with capturing the information, gathering enough information to be able to make contact with that prospective buyer or seller. It moves to connecting, which is what we're going to talk about next. You have engaged in meaningful contact where you get information, gain understanding, and build a relationship. And it ends with the closing by phone or in person for an appointment. Now you have actually converted. Once you have their information, you have to act fast. This is, hang on, let me see. My slides aren't advancing here. Okay, so once you have their information, you have to act fast. Shift creates urgency. I truly believe that this has been my secret sauce. Who in here is a high D personality? Okay, so in a shifting market, I believe we will have an advantage because D personalities don't dilly doubt. They just get to the bottom line, they get to the point, and they go for the <clears throat> ask, and they go for the close. And in a shift, you're going to need to pull out your inner D. So find out about that disc and what that means. In a shifting market, moods and circumstances will change. We're seeing that, aren't we? I know I'm seeing that big time. The path from interest to appointment is fraught with distraction and interference. And you can dissuade and discourage even the most motivated people. The better that you become at converting leads into appointments, the faster you'll be able to move and the more opportunities that you will have. Mike, why is this not? Is that full? He's gonna clicker instead. He's trying to clicker. That one or this one? Clicker work better. Okay. I think we've already been to that one though. Mm -hmm. Okay, so once you have the information, we talked about that. NAR research has shown us consistently that commu consistently communicated that real estate competition is getting to the table. It's the real competition in real estate is actually getting to the table, okay? Um, not at the table. You think that you have to have this beautiful listing presentation or this beautiful buyer's presentation, but your most cost productive thing you can do is learn to get to the table, actually convert it to an appointment. Over two thirds are gonna hire the first agent that they, they interview anyway, right? And I think it's over, over half are gonna do one of the first or the second. So we have the statistics that tell us it's getting the appointment before someone else does. Become a competitor. 
Mm. Become a competitor, win the appointment. It's even more important and harder to do than winning the presentation. And NAR has the statistics to prove it. If you can win the appointment, then you have captured, connected, and closed already. Now you just repeat that in your presentation. Gary says in Shift Tactic 5 that you have a choice, repeatable and dependable or unpredictable and unreliable. You can come prepared or you can wing it. It's your call. It's not going to be the buyer or the seller who determines if they meet or not. It's actually you. Either your ability will cause a meeting to take place or your lack of ability will prevent it. It's not a game of chance, but it's a game of scripts and systems. And this is a great news because it means you can learn how to do it. You can become a great salesperson. It boils down to knowing what to say and then knowing what to do. It's as straightforward as asking for their information, but not running them off in the process. It's as simple as finding common ground, but not just finding things in common. And it's as easy as just requesting a meeting, but not as haphazard as letting it come to pass. So in a shift of any time, really, you need to know as, or, okay, while serving others, we also are going to serve ourselves. We are, in fact, providing for and protecting the interest of those who are counting on us, our family our close associates, and the causes that we have supported. Have the mindset of service with a purpose. To be successful in real estate, you and everyone who works with you must have this mindset. In a shift where people believe tire kicking, time taking, and market testing are their inalienable rights, it's imperative. You are in the sales business. You only get paid when someone buys or sells. Service and information are the two things you offer, market, and provide. Set the expectation that what you do for someone will lead to a sale or a sold listing. And no matter what you do with a true servant's heart, you only get rewarded financially when a sale occurs. In a shift, or anytime really, you need to know as early as possible if someone is willing to work with you. You should not fear running someone off by asking for their information. It's not your job to give out as much free information as people want or to do as much free work as they expect and then leave it to them to tell you when and if they want to be contacted. This is how you make your living. Remember that. I found the best scripts are the most straightforward ones. In other words, just ask for what you want. If this sounds hard for you, then practice. The good news is that you can learn this stuff. Capture is about attitude. There, this is where you are a salesperson and you need to start acting like one. When you're connecting, I'm so sorry, my notes and my, my PowerPoints are off here. Gary says the fundamental thing of connecting is curiosity. To know who someone is, to understand their wants and needs, and to become aware of their worries and concerns. At this point, you are investigating, you're not selling. Okay, so there's a time to sell and there's a time to investigate. Your goal is to generate trust and build confidence. First yours and then theirs. It is your chance to show them what it feels like to work with you. This is connecting. My personal value statement is very simple. I say I genuinely care about my clients. I'm going to show you this when I'm connecting with you. I say you can trust me. You don't talk your way into a trust relationship with someone, you listen your way into that. And lastly, I say I can help you. Their experience of talking with you at this point will have more to do with them hiring you than almost any other thing you can say or do or send to them. And if you were pushy to get the appointment, they won't even remember that once you've connected with them. Mm -hmm. And getting that appointment, you may have to be a little pushy. While you're connecting, you're also qualifying. 
The shift book on page 96 through 97, there are six qualifying questions that you should make a part of your system for connecting. Scripts are often observed one way, but totally experienced another way. Do not write off scripts, especially in a shifting market. Okay. Connecting. This isn't where you tell and sell your way to success, but where you ask and listen your way into their heart. Connection demonstrates that you care. And this is how you connect straightforward, without fear, full of questions, and lots of listening. Once connected, you are you and they are ready for closure. It's called closing someone. Yes, it's old sales language, but Gary suggests in Shift Tactic 5 that you dust it off and that you revisit it. People want to buy, but they hate to be sold. People want to make the right decision, and they fear being talked into the wrong one. People want help, but are hesitant to ask for it. So you have to help them out. You have to ask for them. They want and need you to be in charge in a caring way. Everyone is on some kind of a decision continuum. Closing is basically the process you use to find out where they are and what they're committed to do. So in closing, let's take a look at the different ways you can be a closer. The close means the end in mind, bringing something to a conclusion. These are the different types of closes that Gary talks about. The hard close, the soft close, the direct close, the indirect close, the trial close, the assumptive close, the negative positive close, the take back close, the tie down close, the alternative choice close. These are sales techniques. That's what they are. Out of respect for time today in the shift book, you'll find clear definitions of each and how to use them on pages 100 to 102. Study them memorize them and practice them. And the good news is that you can actually learn this stuff. If you don't know it, you can learn it. Cultivating or otherwise known as follow-up, because most agents are transaction-based. If they don't connect and close the appointment immediately, they a lot of times will just let it slip away. Cultivation or follow up is the last thing I want to talk about. Your lead generation efforts should also be building a pipeline for your business. Some of you won't have a pipeline because you don't cultivate leads that can't be immediately closed for an appointment. I made this mistake early on in my career, and it was a big mistake. Using command is great for this. Command was actually created by Gary utilizing a simple card system that he had created for himself. And he talks about that in shift on page 105 and 106. There is always a small percentage of leads that can't be converted directly to an appointment, no matter how skilled you are. This is where our cultivation system becomes your direct indirect path to an appointment. In a seller's market, the battle is for getting seller listings. That's what we've been dealing with for the last few years. You want to get to the table for the seller listings. You want to present and assess motivation for a shot to take that listing. Typically, you won't do much pre-qualification over the phone in a seller's market. But in a buyer's market, not all listings may be worth taking. When the market shifts, unmotivated and unrealistic sellers can actually cost you money. The decision as to whether you will take an overpriced listing is really going to be yours to make. Top agents differ on this. Um, personally, I think it may be because some are not as good at lead conversion as others are. When you have listings, you can solicit leads. And when you become masterful at conversion, all listings can make you money whether or not you ever sell the listings or not. This is why lead conversion is one of the most skill-based aspects of your real estate sale business. It is one of the last things you will delegate and one that Gary says is arguably the highest dollar productive use of your time. I like the way Gary says you need to get an appointment 
and it's all downhill from there, fail to get an appointment and there is no hill to climb. If you commit to mastering the skill of lead conversion, you will be ready for any shift and you will lift yourself above your competition. I wanna just read you one paragraph out of this book that I skipped that I think is really important. Gary says, when I first got in the real estate business, I thought all the world needed was an honest, servant-hearted, information providing, we'll do whatever it takes, no matter how long it takes. You want it, you got it, real estate agent. That's who I became and it was the right thing to do. But that narrow way of thinking almost caused me to go broke. Along with my commitment to serve others, I soon realized that I required something too. I actually needed to close transactions. And in order to do that, I had to first and foremost devote my time to those who would tell me who they were and how I could contact them. Ultimately, these were the only people I would talk to or provide information to, and I called them leads. So the good news is, if you don't know how to do any of this stuff, you can learn how to do it. And you won't just be fishing when you do that, you'll actually be catching. Any questions? Let's give it up for the need. Really quickly, can I get one aha in the room before we move to Trey? I love the catching. You watching instead of going fishing, no catching. Yeah, I had a big one. So one of the uh, the coolest things that happened, and you when you talk to the people in this room, you get you get some really good nuggets. But I was actually talking to Adam one time, and uh, she said, "There isn't where you tell and sell your way to success, but where you ask and listen your way into their heart." Adam challenged me that I don't like empty space, so I quickly jump in, right, because it's awkward. And how many of us have that? You know, where we're just nervous. And we're like, why aren't you answering me? Here, I'll help lead the conversation. So when she said that, it stuck with me that there is something each of us can take away from that that we can actually put into practice today and see it affect our businesses. So thank you, Denise. That was wonderful. I am so excited to have Trey uh, in the room today. He is another member of our ALC, and he is going to teach us the next kind of continuing in the same conversation of lead conversion <laughs> conversation. Please welcome Trey. Actually, the last portion of this, we're going to break it down into three sections, but the last portion is exactly what Denise just taught. So that's, she did my job for me. We're just going to have her come back up and teach her stuff again. Um, so I think I know pretty much everybody in here, but Trey Watson, I've been with Keller Williams for seven years, um, going into my ninth year in real estate. Um, and we're, have been super, super lucky, but we're having our best year we've ever had this year, which has been awesome. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is uh, shift tactic number six, catching people in your web, and we're going over internet leads. Um, what this really relates to is having a website and utilizing your website. Is there anybody in here that has a website right now? Anybody that doesn't have a website right now? Okay, very good. That was going to be a trick question because everybody has a website at Keller Williams. It's your name.kw.com and you can actually get on there and customize it and add different tools and add different features um, and actually add landing pages. So if there's not a template, that KW has built already, you can go build your own and add those into your website. Um, so if everybody has a website already, this is gonna be a basic blueprint. If there's anybody online, um, and the way that the book teaches this is how to actually go about building your website and the features that you wanna have in it. But then also what we're gonna talk about that's probably gonna be the most beneficial is how to utilize your website, um, even if we're not going on and doing the search engine optimization and those kinds of things. There's so many other ways to utilize this that we really don't talk about. Um, so here's gonna be what we're going over today. It's gonna to be very, very simple, and we're gonna talk about why this is important. So internet lead generation model. Um, there's three things that are important in this model that's creating and maintaining an internet presence, uh, lead generating for traffic to use your website, and then capturing, connecting, cultivating, and closing leads, which is what Benice just talked about. So here's why this is important. Hopefully this one works. Um, anybody know what SOI stands for? Good job. Let's see if this one works. So this has been the best way that I've had sphere of influence explained to me. That doesn't work either, does it? Purple? 
Yeah, that purple? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. I don't think you needed to arrange it. Did you say 50? You said we have 55 minutes? <laughs> okay. We're doing it either way. Can everybody see this? There's one circle, two circle, three circles. Can we agree on that? Yeah. Yes. Very good. Okay. Inner circle is your SOI. That is your sphere of influence. Those are going to be the people that know you, like you, and want to do business with you. They will also be the people that will refer you business. This next outer circle is going to be the people that you know and they know you. I like to refer to this as people you pass in the grocery store. You know their name. They will know your name. You can have a conversation. Out here is unknowns. Those are people that you don't know their name and they don't know your name and you have no connection at all. Does that all make sense? Yes. Okay. The game of real estate is to what? Get as many people in this inner circle as possible, right? If we're trying to generate business and do business, we need the most amount of people here that we can have to have a predictable business. These people in the no category could potentially do business with you and could potentially refer you business if the day and the time is right. These people will not do business with you because they have no idea who you are. Yes or yes? Yes. yes. Very good. This whole ball game is to get people from this circle to this circle and to this circle to grow our SOI to the biggest possible circle that we can have so that we can have a predictable business, right? Make sense? Yes. Very good. That's what this is going to do. And what it's really good at is capturing these people that are unknowns and moving them into a known category so then we can then transact with them. So in order to do that, we have to do three things. We have to have a website. If you don't have a website, nobody's going to use it. Then we have to get people to use it. If people don't use it, there's no point in having a website. And then after they use it, we have to capture their information and actually talk to them, which is very scary. I understand. What we're going to do is we're going to go into creating the website. Everybody has a website already, but we're going to talk about the tools that are important to have in your website. Most of it's already in your KW website if you're using that. There are other companies that you can actually pay to go create your website for you. We're not going to get into those um, today. If you have questions about that, we can talk afterwards. So the important parts of the website, we have to have our foundation, then we have to tool, have tools and content for both buyers and sellers. This is very, very basic. It has to look good. If something does not look professional, they're not going to think you are a professional. They're not going to use you. We have to have points of contact, which are a way for them to contact us and a way for us to contact them. They have to register. We're going to talk about that here in a second. A compelling domain. I'm that D personality. I really don't care about details, but come up with something cute and creative for your website. <laughs> Okay, the important stuff. So the tools and the content that we're going to have in our website, that's going to be very, very important. Everybody has heard of a company called Zillow, correct? Yes. yes. Okay, they've made it very easy for people to search for properties, yes? Yes. yes? Okay, very good. They've made it very easy for us to pay them money as well. What they have done awesome is made it easy to search for properties and save searches on properties, right? The other thing that they've done a really, really good job of is sending instant notifications for when a property gets listed that fits their specific criteria. We have to make sure that we have something that can do this also. If it doesn't have that, there's no point for them to get on your website, right? The whole important thing about this is there's something of value for them there. Key content, um, you can add landing pages for this on your KW website. And there's other companies that'll do this really well, but they will add different sections for information about communities and neighborhoods. One thing that I really like with this is adding specifics for Nixa, for Ozark, for different parts of Springfield, Willard, stuff like that. So people who are out of towners can come in and learn about our community and understand where they want to live. Schools is another big one, obviously. And then also the home buying process which is kind of a cool one. You can start educating people. Um, one thing that I left out at the beginning is four years ago, we had a lot of people that would call us say, hey, we want to buy a house. Great, get pre-approved. All of a sudden we're looking at houses. We're under contract a week or two later if we can get them under contract. Right now, the ball game has slowed down to where we have to nurture these contacts for a much longer time before they're ready to do something. That gives us a huge opportunity to go capture those contacts. So we are the first point of contact for them whenever it becomes time for them to actually transact. This is a great tool for that because they can get on your website that's branded to you and you are the first point of contact. So you get to get on here and monitor their searches. Does that make sense? 
as far as speed and stuff like that goes? Yeah. Okay. So tools for a seller website, very, very easy, a home value request. Sellers don't really care to get on and look around. They want to know what their home is worth and they want to sell it when the time's right, right? We like that. Have a landing page for them to say, hey, I want to know what my home is worth and then call them and tell them what their home is worth. So that makes it a very, very easy registration point. Again, we're going to talk about the importance of that in a second. The whole ball game is that get them to register on your website. That's a very easy way to do it because they want to know what their home is worth and you're the one that can tell them that. Key content, market statistics, and the home selling process. Again, we're just educating them with those two things. Now we're going to go on to lead generating for traffic. Uh-oh, did I screw this up? I did. Okay, we're going on to lead generating for traffic. Now we're going back one. So there's three ways to do this. This is going to be the way that's the most applicable to most of us more than likely. Um, we have online and offline marketing. We have two forms of online marketing, which is online search engine marketing and online related sites marketing. The first one is going to be the one that most people hear about and talk about today. Uh oh, we got a few of these. There we go. Okay, so online search engine marketing is going to, we're going to pay for results and we're going to have organic results. There are two different things. You can pay for both of them. A pay per click. Has anybody ever heard that term, pay per click, right? So you pay for the amount of clicks that and people that you get coming onto your website. The other is what most people hear about the search engine optimization, which is you Google Trey Watson, Springfield, Missouri. My name comes to the top. There's not a whole lot of Trey Watsons in Springfield, Missouri, right? If you Google realtors in Springfield, Missouri, there's like 3 million of them. How do we get to the top of the search engine when people are actually looking for that? So this would be if you ever Google something and you see a sponsored ad on Google, that's the first one. This is the second one actually after you get through the sponsored stuff, you want your name organically at the top and you can pay people to get your name up there. So you're not clicking on a sponsored ad. Does that make sense? Online related sites marketing. I'm not huge on this stuff, so we're going to blow through that. Listing aggregators, directories, site advertising, and third-party third lead generators. Again, we're getting our name out there so people can see us and have an online presence, and we're the one that they ultimately click to to go to our website. The last one, offline marketing. So here's where I am going to slow down a little bit and talk about this. And who in here, does anybody do open houses? Anybody do client events? Anybody do door knocking? Okay, does anybody advertise your website when you do any of those things? Okay, two, nice. <laughs> yard signs, why do we not have our website on our yard signs when people drive by? We get sign calls, right? People call the phone number. How many people in the general public actually wanna call somebody versus getting online on a website, right? Why are we not having our website on our yard signs right now to where people can go on there we're going to capture their information anyway, so we're getting in front of them there. Flyers, brochures, print advertising, direct mail. We're doing door knocking. We're doing those kinds of things. If we're giving people a business card already, and probably a lot of you do, who has their website on their business card now? Okay, that's better. When we're handing that kind of stuff out, that should always have our, have our um, website on there so they can easily get on and access our information. If we can be the first person that they go to, the first website that they register with, we have the better chance of staying in contact with them. And ultimately, when they transact, we're going to be the one to help them, right? Thank you. <laughs> Business cards, word of mouth, same thing here. If people know about our website, they're ultimately going to go tell the people that they know about our website. Does that make sense how we're not really utilizing our websites for this and how it can be used and people can get on and use our stuff? instead of using Zillow or somebody else's stuff, right? So how can we get in front of the most people? Venice talked about this already, so we won't spend a ton of time on this. However, ways to capture, this is a little bit of a technical thing with the websites. Um, if you pay somebody, if you pay a company to build your website, if you're not using the Keller Williams website, different companies do it different ways and how they capture the people's information that get on your website. So a few examples of that upfront must register before entering the search. Everybody's probably been on one of those websites where you want something, you have to put in your information to get it, right? You get no value until you do that. Pre-results, you can enter your search criteria. Then you have to enter your information in order to get the results. Limited results, 
you can view limited information, but you don't get the whole scope and the whole picture. And then we've got an open search where you can search um, and you must register. I missed an M there. You must register for saved searches and email listings, but you can actually get on there and search for stuff before you have to put anything in. Now, here's the thing to pay attention to um, as far as conversion rates go. This goes from the most effective to getting people on your website and registering the lowest conversion rate to actually transacting to down here. You're gonna have the lowest amount of people actually registering on your website, but you're gonna have the highest conversion rate from a transactional standpoint. Okay, so what does this tell us? The more we give them, the less people we're going to capture, okay? Because they get what they want, and then they're gone. However, the people that register here, we're going to have a much higher actual transaction count. Does that make sense? Okay. There's not necessarily a right or wrong. There can be an argument made either way, because the more people you capture, the more business they are going to do down the road, as long as we get to get in contact with them. But if our goal is to call the fewest amount of people possible, like most of us in this room, and we just want the highest amount of transactions, this is going to be what you're going for. So the reason that I say this is if you're paying somebody to build a website for you, pay attention to this and make sure that this meets your goals. Do you just want the most amount of people or do you want fewer people with a higher transaction rate? Does that make sense? Okay. Next, speed to lead. If they're looking on your website, they're going to be looking on other people's website. Um, part of the shift book says, teaches to respond to them however they're responding to you. If they're not answering your phone calls, but they will answer your emails, send them more emails, right? How can we talk to them the most? Do whatever it is that they're responding to. The biggest thing, in the, and what they teach in here in, in the shift book is, um, I can't remember if it was I can't, Ben Kenny or somebody like that said, if they can catch them while they're still on their website, they have a much better chance of being able to get on there and engage with them, right? If somebody's sitting there looking at my stuff on there and I'm talking to them on the phone as they're looking at my stuff, that just grows a connection even more, right? We have a much better relation from, relationship with them because we're so much more connected just because they're looking at my stuff. So the whole ball game with this is if they get on your website and they register, we've got to get in contact with them ASAP because more than likely they're going to log on to somebody else's website tomorrow. Make sense? Next, identify needs. This is very, very basic. Once we're communicating with them, we're understanding what it is that their goals are and how we can actually help them. If somebody's not going to buy a house for five years, does it make sense for to go over and sign listing paperwork tomorrow? No. Probably the answer would be, yeah, great. Let's have listing paperwork for five years signed. Is that practical? Probably not. So we're getting an in actual communication with them to understand what their needs and wants are and understanding, are they a buyer? Are they a seller? How can we actually help them so that we can either close or nurture, which is what Venice just talked about. So is this somebody that we should meet with now, or are we going to push that appointment down the road? And the greatest part about this is if we're getting them to register, we automatically have a, a contact in our database. Um, and we're able to nurture that person until either A, they're ready to transact or they have a referral to send us. So that's the whole ball game is capturing contacts in today's world so we can have the biggest data database and do the most amount of business. Um, so set the appointment, take Venice's tips, get to the table or understand if we are needing to just nurture this contact and continue to build a relationship with them. Because at some point they will transact. We just have to be the one that's still in contact with them at that point in time. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, very good. I think that's everything. So the whole point of this is we've got, a, as, as far as having a website and actually using a website, is we have to make a website. We have to have a website that's actually usable, that's actually functional, that somebody wants to use. Then we have to have people to actually use it. So how are we going to get people to use that? And I love taking that, putting it on your business cards, using it at open houses, using it for door knocking, using it for whatever it is, those kinds of things, social media and all that stuff. We've got to get people to use it. And then lastly, if we're not capturing anybody's information and we're not actually transacting with anybody, it's a waste of time. So we have to have something or else people aren't going to use it. If people aren't using it, it's not worth even having it. And if we're not doing any business from it, it's a waste of time in the end. So make sense? Yes. Okay, cool. I think that's it. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. Questions. Yeah.
Can you pause for this practical application? Yeah, thank you, Carrie. That was awesome. You're welcome. So there's so much good stuff today, a practical way to get our business moving, right? One of the things I wanted to encourage you guys today as we're hearing is to get out and do the work. So find somebody that you can challenge and have that accountability moment peer to peer and encourage each other to get out and practice something you learned today. We hope you guys have a great day and we will see you at the oh. next week. Adam and Carrie are teaching. Oh. So we're jumping. We're doing seven and nine because of a retreat they have going on. So we're going to have a a power pack next Tuesday. It's going to be awesome. 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 Okay. And then we have the Halloween chili cook-off. Yes. Great. All right. You guys go have a good day. Go sell one more house. Mike, does your jacket.